please enjoy hundreds of my video lectures on telecom and wireless please do not forget to subscribe to my channel please also like my videos please share my channel with your friends and colleagues thank you let's move over to reverse channel structures let's look at the figure that's appearing in the screen now the reverse channel structure is shown here reverse channel includes reverse common channel and reverse dedicated channels reverse common channels are reverse access channel enhanced access channel and common control channel the reverse dedicated channels could be reverse pilot channel dedicated control channel fundamental channel supplemental channel and supplemental code channels let's look at each one of them briefly so what is reverse cdme 2000 link all about reverse link code channels are identified by unique time shifts of long pn code i repeat reverse code channels are identified by long pn code time shifts please remember long pn code please recall that time shifted versions of a pn code have very little correlation with each other therefore subscribers in the reverse direction are channelized using unique shift of the long pn code let's look at the additional figure that is appearing on a screen now there are two types of reverse channels access channels and traffic channels we'll see some of these unique channels in cdma 2000 which are not part of the is 95 systems reverse pilot channel this provides pilot and power control information this is unique to cdma 2000 which is not there in the is 95 this helps the base station to have a coherent demodulation reverse pilot channel enables the mobile to transmit at a lower power level how reverse pilot channel allows the mobile to inform the base station of the forward power levels being received this information helps the base station to reduce power for this particular mobile so this is power control loop the pilot channel enhances uplink performance provides the base station a means to perform coherent detection coherent is synchronous detection pilot channel allows base station to do timing corrections without having to guess where the mobile is this actually results in less transmission power overall pilot channel also helps the base station in detecting a mobile transmission whether the mobile is transmitting or not used for initial acquisition of the mobile time tracking this takes into account the propagation delay between the mobile and the base and rake reference recovery for multi path reception and reverse pilot channel is transmitted when the enhanced access channel reverse common control channel or reverse traffic channel is enabled let's look at the new figure that's on your screen now we'll talk about reverse power control sub channel mobile inserts a reverse power control sub channel on the pilot channel when operating on the reverse traffic channel mobile supports both the inner power control loop and the outer power control loop for forward traffic channel power control loop let's look at the inner loop the base station compares the measured eb by nt of the pilot it receives from the mobile with a corresponding objective which a predetermined set point what is eb by nt eb is bit energy nt is noise eb by nt obviously should be a very high figure that is the bit energy should be high enough to combat the noise so it is akin to signal to noise ratio and the reader is expected to refresh his fundamentals on eb by nt the mobile station will be ordered to decrease the transmission power if the measured eb by nt exceeds objective otherwise the mobile station will be ordered to increase the transmission power the adjustment of frequency is quite rapid at 800 seconds that is every 1.25 milliseconds so that is quite fast let's look at the outer loop power control the purpose of this is to maintain quality of service that is the frame error rate should be less than 1% bsc that is base station controller changes closed loop power control threshold eb by nt at the base station what's the method base station feeds back the frame error rate to bsc in turn bsc estimates a set point value that is eb by nt to achieve the target frame error rate eb by nt is bit energy by density of interference power spectrum we have seen this briefly uh, a few seconds back if fer exceeds 1% increase the eb by nt that is closed loop power control threshold 
if FER is better than one percent, then decrease the EB by NT. Okay, if frame error is not detected, decrease the EB by NT, big up and small down. Okay, now let us look at the new figure that's appearing on your screen. The Walsh codes for various reverse channels are shown. For example, reverse forward channel is a Walsh code 4 and it is a 16 bit code. Please note, CDMA 2000 will have variable length codes unlike IS95 where each Walsh code had a fixed length. What was the length? You please recall and find out. In this slide, let's look at access channels. What is an access channel? It's a channel used by the mobile when there is no call in progress to send messages to the base station and there could be three scenarios. When the mobile wants to originate a call or mobile wants to respond to a paging message or the mobile wants to register its location. Each base station operates with up to 32 access channels. The access channel has no specific watch code assignment but uses the paging channel watch codes as part of its long code mask. Please recall this. Let us look at this beautiful animated figure. It is full of information and highly self-explanatory. Access channel is always from mobile to BS and access channel happens when there is no call in progress. Let's look at some of the messages. Registration message sent to the base with information necessary to page the mobile such as location, status and identification. This is necessary so that the base station can efficiently page the mobile when establishing a call to the mobile. Order message to transmit information such as base station challenge, mobile station acknowledgement, local control response and mobile station reject. Data burst message user generated data message sent by the mobile station to the base station. Origination message allows the mobile station to place a call sending dial digits. Page response message this is a mobile response to a page or slotted page in continuing the process for receiving a call. Authentication challenge response message contains necessary information to validate the mobile station's identity. Channel assignment message on successful authentication base station informs the mobile the traffic channel allotted for this particular call. The bit rate is 4.8 kilobits per second and it is a slotted random access channel. Let us continue with the access channel. Please note Walsh code identifies different channels and 15 bit PN codes identify different cells and 42 bit PN codes identify different mobiles. Mobile receives a bundle of signals from the base station, a maximum of 64 Walsh streams. Mobile identifies which one to accept depending on its own allotted watch code. This is call specific of course. That is, the mobile has received the desired signal and also a lot of undesired signal from within one cell. Now let's look at the next one. The mobile also receives similar bundles from more than one base station. Which base station should it talk to that is identified by a PN code offset and unique sequence of codes allotted to each base station. Now look at what the mobile has to go through. It receives plenty of signals, most of them unwanted from the same cell and also a lot of unwanted signals from the neighboring cells. Mobile has to choose a signal with a particular Walsh code which is of interest to it and also with a particular PN offset which is of interest to it. Then and only then it will be able to identify the correct signal that is meant for it. Similarly, the base station also may receive two or more mobiles transmitting with the same Walsh code, one from its own cell and one from its neighboring cell and maybe one more from another neighboring cell, etc. Now, how does the base identify the correct mobile? This is accomplished by what is known as long code. The base station identifies which mobile is talking to it by another set of PN codes called long codes. This long code will be unique for every mobile that is in the network. That is, if the network has got 10,000 mobiles, each one of them will have a unique long 
PN code. Therefore, a particular cell will be able to identify a particular mobile by the appropriate long code. So, long codes are another unique sequence of codes identifying the mobiles. Let's look at two more important channels, reverse common control channel and enhanced access channel each. Look at the figure. This is reverse common control channel. Why reverse common control channels? In IS-95, if a mobile wants to send a message back to the base station when not in conversation, that is when no traffic channel is allotted, the mobile has only one option, that is access channel. But all the access channels are random access channels. What does this mean? It means the mobiles must compete for the available random channels and try and transmit it. If two mobiles try to transmit on the same access channel, collision takes place and the colliding mobiles try to back off and attempt a retransmission after a random delay. What's the drawback here? Very important and lengthy messages such as authentication challenge response and the origination message also are transmitted in the same access channel in IS-95A. To send such long messages, it's better to have channels which are scheduled rather than random, that is contention based. You don't compete and grab a channel to send long and important messages. In CDMA 2000, this is overcome, allotting specific control channels. To minimize the collision problem, IS-2000 came up with two channels. One is reverse common control channel and reverse enhanced access channel. Now let's look at reverse common control channel. Frame duration 20, 10 or 5 milliseconds. Data rate 19.2, 9.6 and 4.8 kilobits. A preamble is sent to the base for the base station to acquire this control channel. Reverse pilot also is sent for the base to identify and coherently demodulate it. Mobile transmits during intervals specified by the base station. That is, this is a scheduled channel. May contain up to 32 reverse common control channels. This channel is used by the mobile when traffic channel is not yet allotted. That is, the conversation has not begun. And this is used for transmission of user and signaling information to the base station. Let us look at this new figure. This talks about reverse enhanced access channel. Why enhanced access channel? Scheduling of mobile transmission on reverse common control channel solves collision problems of course when transmitting large signaling messages such as authentication challenge response and the origination message. But what about the very first attempt by the mobile to access a channel? The collision problem is still very much real there. In its first ever access attempt, the mobile does not yet have any channels assigned to it. To transmit its access request, mobile uses reverse enhanced access channel. Now, what is this reach? It's quite similar to the access channels we have seen in IS-95, but reverse enhanced access channel is smaller in duration than RACH, that is a random access channel. Reach is shorter in duration than RACH. Although collisions are still possible, because of the shorter duration, reach collisions are less probable than RACH. Reach is used by the mobile to initiate communication with the base station, transmit short message such as MAC messages, message authentication code, and reach is used by the mobile to respond to pages also. Reach is used in two modes, basic access mode, mobile shall send only preamble and no header at all. And the next one is reservation access mode. This consists of a preamble, header fields, but no data fields. Enhanced access data is sent on the reverse common control channel. That means preamble and header are sent in reach and the actual data is sent on reverse common control channel. This is meant to minimize the collisions and therefore reduce the access channel's power. Hi guys, hope you have enjoyed this video. Before you leave this, please ensure that you are subscribing to this. Also, please do like these videos and share it amongst your friends and colleagues. There are plenty of other videos and I hope you will be able to find time to browse through all these things. Thank you.